So here we are then, uh, Marine Surveying International Fest 3 for cargo and commercial ship surveyors. Uh, we're now starting the second half. Uh, this is presentation number seven. And I'm delighted to welcome uh, Captain Rushin Dial, based out in Goa. Um, Deputy Vice President of the Institute. And uh, so making his way now up towards the role of president in a few years time. Um, I know cybersecurity is something that's interested you for quite some while. And uh, I think this is another fascinating topic. So you've got up to one hour, Rishin, and I'll leave it in your capable hands. Thank you, Mike. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And uh, uh, let, let me start by it's by 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 really you know saying that one year from now or uh, one and a half year back nobody was really talking about uh, cyber security and uh, ships yes they were talking about cyber security but uh, where ships are concerned nobody was bothered so how how come the change took place and unfortunately like uh, most of the times it happens with uh, uh, with uh, uh, with us seafarers unless and until we have a regulation in force uh, nobody really bothers about doing anything so let me start and i hope that i will uh, i know i'm uh, relatively late in the uh, in the day and i hope some of you are still uh, fresh enough to ask me some questions so let's see how we I'm going to attempt to, uh, first of all, uh, to introduce the fact that cyber security is here to stay, where shipping is concerned. And then I want to dwell a little bit, little bit into the USCG, US postcard. And uh, what is the, they have, uh, they have uh, come up with a circular and which is pretty much important for anybody to do with anything to do with shipping and any of their ships going to the to the us so uh, let me start by first introducing the topic and uh, looking at what uh, we need to do as surveyors it is a huge business opportunity gentlemen let me assure you that this is a huge business opportunity which has not been here in so you know so many years i'm telling you and uh, if you guys can actually look at it and uh, work towards it i think uh, you know this is a huge opportunity so let me start uh, just as an icebreaker, why are we so hesitant to accept what IMO or uh, other guys in the office are telling us? So let this be an icebreaker and this is the master. It can be me, it can be you, it can be anyone. But this is the actual narrative. Why is the ship's staff being, uh, you know, uh, harassed? I mean, that is the word that is being used, harassed to, uh, to, to, to make more records. Now look, we have been through this. I mean, many, many, many of you uh, must be fellow seafarers who have been sailing for years and years and years. And uh, we realize 
that uh, gave me fulfilling roles of doctors and uh, you know come what may but now this it why should we fulfill this role as it so this is this is something which has been going on with uh, with, with with our guys and within the community just not acceptable but what to do you got to do it this is the first time you have coined a term called ot ot this is about it and ot they may be related absolutely but have different outputs and we will discuss that i mean that the whole point of this whole uh, uh, lecture or sharing of this uh, few minutes of uh, the screen the captain says Of course, we are not uh, IT technicians. And uh, what is this OT that you are talking about? And we are now mandated by IMO Resolution 428 to address cyber risks. so really we are coming down uh, you know to a fact that we may not want to do it but we have to do it because now this is a mandatory instrument doesn't have to be like that but unfortunately we will have to have somebody dedicated to uh, build uh, those uh, records and uh, unfortunately it's going to be the second mate so the second mate is going to be uh, building these records and uh, the second half of the presentation where we will get uh, the uscg the us uh, united states coast guard uh, into being you will realize that unless and until we maintain those records we have got a, a, a risk of being detained Can you elaborate on what is OT? Yes, yes, we are going to do that. So, gents, many of you, many, 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 many of you, will will be wondering what is uh, this uh, OT that we are talking about? So, OT is operational technology. and you will have lot of various other uh, uh, terms like uh, iacs or ias or so many other terms which have been coined by so many other agencies i the whole purpose of this uh, uh, talk is to make you all all of us all of us in the iims completely uh, familiar uh, or uh, uh, comfortable with whatever terms people may be coining uh to start with ot is operational technology and uh, iacs is uh, again uh, you know uh, 
it, 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 IACS is uh, technology uh, with regard to automation and uh, control and systems. And you will have um, many others like uh, ICMS or IAS. So it is all to do with technology, which is relating to an output. So there is, uh, there is, there is just uh, mm, there is no uh, sort of a control where uh, IT and OT is concerned. IT is information technology and uh, OT is operational technology, but uh, depending on how it is made, it is given different forms. Let's start at the beginning. What is IT and what is OT? All right. So what is uh, IT? IT is uh, simply software and hardware where the output data is communication. If the output data is communication, it has to be termed as So what is communication? Uh, let's say that we are talking. Yes, it's communication. Uh, what is email? Yes, it is. And anything else which denotes communication is ID. Now, OT, let me try and explain what OT is. So, OT, let me give you a simple example of a washing machine. When you put the soap inside and you start the cycle, what is it that is regulating the cycle? It's something, no? It's something that is regulating the cycle. And uh, the, 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 that something is a PLC log. And I will go ahead to the next slide and go ahead and um, uh, try to explain as to how this is applicable on ships. Simple terms. This is a two minute uh, video that we will watch and I uh, hope uh, uh, Mike, can we hear the, uh, the I can't hear it Richard, no, I can see it but I can't hear it. Thank you. 
Hi, Richard. We can't seem to um, hear the video, but we can see it fine. All right. Presently, what are, what 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 we are doing is we have got a, you know, we have got so much of info uh, from you know, multiple sources, and uh, we are looking. We don't know what to look at. We don't know what to do, and. Uh, Owners, managers, yes, we are, we are, we are, we are you know. So this is really uh, with regard to ship management. And uh, we come in only when uh, people really uh, come to us and they tell us. But it, it, it is a huge opportunity where uh, we need to go in and, 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 and tell that we are able to, to comply. Basically comply. This is another small video which I want to show you. One minute. Give me a moment. The SCADA acronym stands for
Lucian, I don't know if you can hear me. We can't hear the video. I think the image is Lucian, but we can't hear it. We can't hear the sound. Still no sound, I'm afraid, Ruchin. The uh, mic is it? Yeah, it has the... When you shared your video, to, when you shared your presentation at the start in Zoom, there's a little box that you have to check, which says share my video sound. I wonder if I might ask you just to stop your, stop your share, go back again and start it and just look for that little box. I think that might be the problem. All right. <clears throat> you have to stop the screen share, Rishan. In. Uh, my they need to go to stop share, um, possibly at the top of your screen or the bottom. I can't see because you're in control. Oh, no. okay. can, can you hear the audio along with the video? Uh, no, we can't. We can see the images, Mike. but we can't. we can't hear it. No. All right, so tell me how to do it because I'll have to share the, the previous you, video also because the what, previous video was two minutes. What, what you need to do is to stop your presentation, stop your share, come right back out and come back in and load your presentation in again. Okay, I'm stopping the share now. Okay, now when, when you go to pick up your right. presentation in the bottom left hand corner, there's a little box and it says share video sound or something and you look, put a little tick or a cross in the box and then pick up your presentation. Can you see that little box? I can't. On the left hand side, mute and uh, stop video. Yeah, no, no. So if you go, um, if you go to share screen, click on the share screen. But before you go and pick up Hold your up then it offers you on the little left hand on the left hand side a little box you see to check that box it says something like share sound or share yeah, audio yeah, yeah. I, I got it I got it I got it yeah okay so if you tick that and then go back to share your presentation I'm hoping the video will play well we'll get some sounds let's try I'm, I'm, I'm sorry guys I'm sorry uh, for this <laughs> that's fine Can you start that video again playing, Rishan?
So, what about uh, Mike? Can you hear this? Uh, yes, 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 yes. Audio? Yes, yes, yes. yes. automatic system is not fit for purpose. What happens if it's not set up correctly, regularly monitored, or properly maintained? What happens? And there's another problem with automation. At sea, operators of equipment or systems need to be constantly aware, with an instinctive feel for something not being quite right. Yet, Automation can reduce the role of the operator to that of nothing more than an observer. Someone who simply monitors screen displays, warning messages and reacts to alarms. There is no doubt that automation has dramatically increased the number of alarms on board. So it's crucial that seafarers are trained to recognise what those alarms mean. The greater control achievable by automation allows engines and systems to remain within close desired operating parameters, thereby reducing the need for maintenance. So engineers now tend to rely on automation and have less experience manually controlling the plant. The trend is towards centralised operation and integrated automation systems to provide effective control of cargo and machinery systems. The problem is the operators can be overloaded with too much information, especially in abnormal situations. Preventing this overload places certain demands and obligations on the people involved in the development of automation systems. Poor integration of information systems on the bridge and in the engine room, plus the move towards an increasingly passive monitoring role for seafarers, can present an increased risk of unintentional human error, in turn leading to accidents at sea. There's no question that automation will become more widespread and almost certainly more complex, but... As we said earlier, the sea is still the sea. And despite technological advances, nothing exists yet that will replace the officer of the watch in his or her duties. Hey. So... like to play the second video also. No, that's great. That's good. <laughs> when considering this term, you can conjure varying images, and you should. A SCADA system is a collection of both software and hardware components that allow supervision and control of plants, both locally and remotely. The SCADA also examines, collects, and processes data in real time. Human Machine Interface, or HMI software, facilitates interaction with field devices, such as pumps, valves, motors, sensors, etc. Also within the SCADA software, is the ability to log data for historical purposes. The structural design of a standard SCADA system starts with remote terminal units, or RTUs, and or programmable logic controllers, or PLCs. As you know, RTUs and PLCs are microprocessors that communicate and interact with field devices, such as valves, pumps, and HMIs. That communication data is routed from the processors to the SCADA computers, where the software interprets and displays the data, allowing for operators to analyze and react to system events. Current-day SCADA systems have adapted to the changing technologies and have a great advantage over the older SCADA systems. With the adoption of modern IT standards such as SQL and web-based applications, Today's SCADA allows for real-time plant information to be accessed from anywhere around the world. Having this data at the operator's fingertips facilitates improved plant operations, allowing for responses to SCADA system cues based on field-collected data and system analysis. These operator interactions can be from a computer right on the plant floor, 
to an office building in some other region in the world. Advancing technologies have indeed made the world seem like a very small place, relatively speaking. And because the current SCADA system software is typically adopted the SQL database model, historical collection of data may be logged and used in trending applications to further improve plant processes, as well as creating mandated record keeping for some of the industries out there. Essentially, SCADA is a collection of hardware and software components. This collection of components begins with real-time data collected from plant floor devices, such as pumps, valves, and transmitters. These components don't have to be from a particular vendor. They just need to have a communication protocol that the processor can utilize. Data collected from the field devices is then passed to the processors, such as PLCs. From the processor, the data is distributed to a system of network devices. These devices may be HMIs, end-user computers, and servers. On the HMI and end-user computer, graphical representations of the operations exist for operator interactions, such as running pumps and opening valves. This data may also be analyzed and used to enhance plant production and troubleshoot problems. The scale. So coming back, coming back uh, to uh, what is our role? What is our role now? As surveyors or uh, as, uh, as guys who are going to go in and uh, give you a, and give the ship manager uh, a, a, a solution. What is our role? We have got to develop a culture. How can we develop a culture for a company, which is a challenge? Uh, essentially, we need to set up. We need to set up a list of policies. And if we can set up a list of policies, how we are going to implement them is going to come naturally. Daily operations, we need to understand, and that is why we are uh, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are so much better than any IT professional who may be going on board and saying that you know I am going to now you know design this uh, system with you. IT professionals do not understand the nuances of the trade. They do not understand the day-to-day -day operations of the seafarers. The two or three points uh, of the last and uh, essentially Depends upon what you want to do. Do you, do you, do you, the, do you want to uh, put in a, a law within the company which says that uh, you need to adhere to these points or, or develop a culture wherein people attend, people start looking at these points, uh, you know, naturally. So there's a system of training where training is, uh, where, where, where we are holding training now for people and uh, people who go on board masters and second mates to start with. And uh, essentially that, that puts you in control of uh, what's going on on board with regard to cyber hygiene. 
and this is something that we did uh, with the uh, K line, and uh, we've got it approved. And we have a central console. But this is something which is very, very, very interesting and very hard to comprehend, very hard to understand actually. So what are we looking at? If you look at the, if you go down, go to level zero. Can, can all of you, whoever is here, can go down to level zero. And you will have all these uh, sensors sending senses to level one. which are the logic controllers. And they in turn are servicing the SACOs and Centum, which are uh, softwares. Essentially, this is the entire automation process. So, you have all of these sensors, must be 2,000, 3,000 sensors. And all these sensors are sending their readings uh, to controlling software. And from this software, because of the, uh, because of the readings that they are receiving, they are then ultimately deciding what is the control to be maintained. And this is the prime difference between IT and OT. Any, anything, any hardware and software which is related to action is OT. And any hardware and software which is related to communication is IT. So we come back and as surveyors, we have got a great opportunity to one, we go to an organization, identify, protect, detect, respond and recover. Identify. So identify, people have different uh, opinions. In my, in, 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 in my vocabulary, identify is uh, inventories and uh, looking at the setups the network plans and we get to know what we are going to be dealing with protect protect yes we set up uh, the the roles the responsibilities uh, every control has two components either it is uh, procedural or it is technical and uh, where we are concerned yes uh, Procedural definitely, but uh, technical also, we want to know what the control is. So we protect. And then, yes, if something goes wrong, how do we detect? Uh, in my opinion, it is uh, mainly through training. We need to train our people to know how we are going to detect any, 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 uh, anything that's going to. Uh, 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 which, which, which may be, which may be uh, which, uh, which may be interfering with our uh, routine or thing. Detect, yes. Respond, yes. How are we going to respond? We need to have a plan. We have a documented plan. And then recover. So the, 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 the the last two portions of this uh, menu is very uh, self-explanatory. One minute. Yeah. Uh, respond and recover, yeah, def definitely. Now, coming back to this is essentially to identify 
you look at the right hand uh, screen, the reason why I have been uh, from the start, I mean, pushing this as a business opportunity is uh, that guys to the IIMS I think we have a golden opportunity to sell this and uh, cyber security cannot be bought off the shelf and come as you know whatever they may they may be thinking people have not yet uh, uh, come to terms with it, but uh, it's an IMO resolution which uh, the flag states must uh, adhere to, and USCG is the first uh, first uh, you know to, to put it into this, and we will discuss uh, very quickly into what the USCG needs to do. But this is a golden opportunity when we are concerned where the IIMS is concerned. And I think we should take, uh, I, it, it, it is something which has not happened for a long, long time. And uh, we can take a lead in doing this and uh, getting through with the ships, uh, management companies and uh, ship owners and uh, looking at how we can, uh, you know, help them. All right, so we come to the USCG TVC. So the USCG has now Coast Guard's uh, one minute. So they have issued a work instruction. Richard, I'm not sure if I've lost your connection. Can you hear me? Uh, Mike? Is your connection a bit unstable? Can you see this now? Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, I just All lost, right. I lost your voice. Essentially, the Coast Guard has uh, enforced IMO Resolution 428 in its own way. And for guys who are uh, used to uh, US Coast Guard, uh, you will know that uh, uh, these are straight. It's, it's, it's black and white. There is no gray uh, involved anywhere. And uh, I want to go ahead and actually share this with you. One minute. Some of my, my graphics are not coming up. Hold on. So, uh, I'm, I don't know how many of us are uh, presently uh, here together. And uh, uh, many, maybe 90, 99% of us may have been sailing uh, together or, uh, or, or sailing at some point of time. But uh, the, the, the issue here is of uh, marine inspectors and uh, port state officers, port state control officers. So they have issued a, a notification uh, where they in fact are uh, notifying uh, their uh, port uh, state uh, control officers as to what they need to check when they go on ship uh, for vessels coming into US ports. 
Now, this is extremely important because this deals with a detainable uh, deficiency, which is code 30. And uh, code 30 deficiency is that they will come on board and uh, uh, Mike, can you see my entire screen? Because on my screen, the right hand side is, you know, is filled yes, with the... Uh, all is good. Okay, all, all is good. right. All right, all right, all right. So, the, 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 the point I'm trying to make is that if you go into the US and uh, uh, you have a ship which is, uh, which is being audited by a US Coast Guard and they're going to ask simple questions, but if they determine that you are eligible for a Code 30 uh, detainable deficiency, then your ship is going to be detained. And I think this is, you know, it, it, it is the ultimate, uh, I mean, we've got LNG ships, which are like $300,000 a day. And if you're going to get detained for a day, you're looking at $300,000 a day detainable fee. So, I mean, why do it? And this is a great, business opportunity for uh, all the IIMS members and uh, they they are free to contact me and we can uh, look at uh, you know how we need to look at uh, these ships which are calling US ports and how we need to ensure uh, that uh, they don't get uh, caught uh, you know on the wrong foot and essentially if you look at the notification which I can send to you, uh, is a very simple notification. It is not uh, a complicated one, and um, they are going to. They are not going to come specifically for uh, the you know, for cyber security. They are going to come for their entire uh, examination, and they will include cyber security into their uh, inspection. And when they include, they're going to do some very simple things like talking to the second mate. And uh, let me look at this example while aboard a ship for a psc exam the second officer explained that egg disc is not operational and this is this is all that they are going to do and they are going to be asking simple questions essentially what they require is competent answers or rather just simple answers which are not, uh, you know, uh, incriminating. I will send this across to Mike and, uh, you know, this can be sent to all of you who are attending. But essentially, uh, this is exactly what I have, in fact, uh, taken it uh, directly from the USCG uh, notification. And uh, it is so clear. And Can I, can I ask a question, Rush? And I've had a question on the chat from Ed, who asks, is ISO 2700 a factor in developing cybersecurity for ships? And does IMO resolution, uh, resolution 428 incorporate or reflect ISO 2700? Do you know the answer? Uh, ISO 2700? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, IMO doesn't uh, ask you to become a uh, 27,001 uh, accredited or approved. But uh, what it asks you 
is to to comply with the uh, uh, IMO resolution 428. so but to make it simple um, uh 27001 is a entire uh, management system which a company needs to uh, you know uh, deploy and uh, go through but uh, 20 uh, but uh, resolution 428 yes you can uh, whatever we are talking about today in the, now for the last 30 minutes is uh, is based on uh, resolution for uh, they've come up with this resolution they put up they've come up with a fal uh, facilitation committee and uh, how they need to comply and uh, they have given very uh, very uh, streamlined uh, regulations as to how we need to comply I Thank you Roshan All right Are, are you concluding Do you understand your PowerPoint uh, I need 5 more minutes Yeah okay All right so we are on this uh, uh, the us cg and uh, very quickly we'll dip it through this now guys there's a code 30 deficiency code 30 deficiency means that your ship is going to get detained you don't want that you just don't want that and in the day that happens i remember in my sailing days the day that it happened <laughs> i tell you you know um, you're going to get screwed yeah so either you have a code 17 where uh, you know you can uh, you can uh, do the you can uh, repair and you can show the the surveyor that we have been uh, that we have uh, conducted repairs as asked but if you get a code 30 then i'm you you are in a mess yeah you are in a mess so uh, really don't want to have a code 30 deficiency uh, um which is you know psc is calling me now for something else but, <laughs> but uh, the code 30 deficiency is something that you don't need and um, code 17 it's a normal deficiency which uh, normally you know you 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 get it and then uh... okay guys uh, so this is about it and uh, i only want to Uh, round up by saying whenever you all actually uh, go to a company or go to a ship understand that they know the ship better than you and uh, you will have to develop uh, systems which will work for them uh, rather than you know something which will uh, work for us uh, uh mike this is it from me i am uh, willing to take questions now i hope uh, i am going to get I'm some sure. questions thank you does anybody have any questions anybody involved in um offering this service to to uh, vessel operators i see one of the big um companies was hacked recently was it csl Bushin, one of the big companies, big shipping owners. Did you see that one? CSL. Is it CSL who were hacked? What, um, one of the big guys. I think they were. It was a ransomware demand or something. And I think Maersk have had a problem as well. So, it's cyber is a a real challenge. Hmm. I have no questions. Okay. I have no questions. 
So um, I'm going to say thank you very much. And if you would stop your share, please. Yeah.